Molo San Bonani, hello, how's it? Shalom. And goedemiddag, welkom na the uh, welcome to Big Daddy Liberty Show, the vlogs edition of the show. My name is Sikhe Ngobese, Big Daddy Liberty, bringing you breaking news, an update from the court case in Piet Retief, where, of course, if you've been watching the show uh, for the past, what, week and a half or so, as we've covered this issue, perhaps today's verdict then of bail having been granted to the five men would not necessarily surprise surprise you because you would be rather well versed on the facts around the arguments that were made in court. And that's what we strived to do here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. And of course, with a lot of help from the reporting of the Daily Friend publication. Remember, you can read the Daily Friend at www.dailyfriend.co.za. Speaking about the Daily Friend, I am joined by Daily Friend journalist, um, Gabriel Krauser, who, again, has been someone who's been a very, very rational and information-leaning uh, voice. Um, I butchered that sentence, but um, what I'm effectively saying is Gabriel, having been on the ground and in that courtroom following the arguments from both the state and the defense team of the five accused, has been a um, providing the information, of course, and he's been on the show with out me waffling on let me bring him on because we're going to have a short interview really this is just an update on this wonderful era of shabbos uh gabriel krauser you are now on screen welcome to this vlog brother dude uh, i'm gonna get straight into it um you know and as i said in the lead up anybody who's been watching this show perhaps really wouldn't have been that surprised by today's outcomes given the nature of what we i termed the context, the truths, but effectively uh, the arguments in court. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that uh, you, you raise such an important point. One of the reasons that people lose faith in the criminal justice system is that the police don't always do their job. They don't follow up and do investigations. Uh, sometimes magistrates and judges... Uh uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, yes. can I just put a, a short uh, uh, time out on that? Because I'm just keeping an eye on the comments that I am buffering. Let me just switch to my Wi-Fi. Please bear with me. Um, there will be a slight uh, break in transmission. We're just buying ourselves some time here as I switch to... Uh, Wi-Fi. In fact, with that being said, I will see you guys after this very, very, very short intermission. All right. Welcome back, people. I think things will be resolved um, at the stage. I'm just going to keep an eye on the comment section, guys. Please uh, do get the comments in. I'm hoping there's no lagging anymore. But uh, Gabriel, sorry, man, to have cut you short there. Let's maybe get back into making that point. You know, as yeah. I said, anybody who's watching the show yeah. wouldn't have necessarily been surprised by this um, uh, this, uh, this this verdict. Yeah. So, so the point I was trying to get to is that I think sometimes the media does a disservice to the courts by not providing information to the public about what's actually being said in court. So if you if you were following a lot of mainstream media, I think you would be shocked that uh, these terrible four racist white farmers and their and their black henchmen have been released on bail because the state's case is watertight and the, these people are, are evil and vicious and are going to intimidate witnesses and and, and prejudice the, any trial to come. And so the fact that the they've been uh, awarded bail will lead you to think, well, yes, it's the, the system is not really working. But if you've been following the details closely and you've been doing a very good job of, 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 of making that happen, then you know that the defense brought forward video footage showing that the state's witnesses accusing these people of murder told lies. The chief investigating officer conceded that they told at least one blatant lie, conceded that in another regard, material regard, they, they, they were incorrect. Incorrect, for example, to say that they arrived unarmed when in fact they all arrived with large sticks, lying to say that they uh, pulled their own guy back when in fact he was pushed back by his brother. Yeah. And the biggest fact that everyone's missed is that, you know, the, the victims were described as two innocent work seekers when, in fact, one of them is a farm employee, a very loyal employee. And uh, 
uh, was trying to to keep the peace and and unfortunately on the accused version was then shot dead by his brother uh, either accidentally or deliberately that's still to be determined but uh, yeah. on the basis of that people might not be surprised more to the point uh, in terms of uh, magistrate and Cuomo's ruling he said that it's common cause that they don't pose a flight risk uh, all of the accused are residents there they their families are there they're not going to run away yeah. they will be returning to trial also the state had argued that they'll tamper with witnesses but had brought no evidence to bear uh to to uh, to to justify that point the judge drew attention to that fact and said therefore i can't consider this to be a problem um yeah. the defense actually asked said look why don't you give a, an instruction to say that uh, the accused when they go back to their farms aren't allowed to talk about the case with any of the farm workers because we don't know who the witnesses are their testimony hasn't been released their identity hasn't been released so we don't know who you might talk to and accidentally uh, tamper with this thing but if you just give us an instruction uh, to our clients not to talk to anyone uh, who's a farm worker maybe that'll help um, so I think the defense trying proactively to to assist the situation uh, but in any event the magistrate found that they're not a flight risk that they'll show up to trial that there's no evidence that they're going to tamper with witnesses uh, they are um, all responsible uh, business people uh, this is soya harvesting time mealy harvesting time it's very important that they get back to their families get back to work and of course they've been sitting in jail for 15 and 20 days respectively and yeah. uh, the magistrate emphasized that pre-trial uh, uh, jail time can never be punitive or prejudicial uh, yeah. you cannot assume that these people are guilty you must assume that they're innocent and and the state failed to show any extraordinary reason that they should be kept behind bars and so they've been released on ten thousand rand each uh, th there's no problem in raising that money um and uh, yeah i think the bail hearings have concluded in that regard uh soberly and judiciously if there's one more point that i can squeeze in it's that the yep. magistrate ruled that this is a schedule five uh bail hearing rather than a schedule six and what, that's what to that say mean? So Schedule 6 is what the state argued, and that means conspiracy to do murder, that there's a common purpose, that these guys were basically in a, in a Buramach gang that planned and used walkie-talkies and WhatsApp and whatever to plan to murder uh, the two Koka brothers. And if uh, there's different rules for bail application if it's Schedule 6, if it's a kind of gang violence incident. Uh, yeah. And, and th that couldn't play out. I mean, one reason it couldn't play out, which I saw in court, was that uh, the chief investigating officer conceded that the police were phoned over an hour before the Kolka brothers were shot, on whichever version you believe, um, mm. and phoned by one of the farmers. Uh, mm. And he could not contest that it is ridiculous to, to assume that a conspiracy of, of Buramach farmers are going to get together and plan to kill two people in, in an hour's time and then mm. phone the police now, who are only 10 minutes away, to call them to come and witness their their murderous attack uh mm. and so this conspiracy theory uh in that regard alone um fell on its face but there were other bits of evidence in any event the magistrate ruled that at schedule five which means the charge is understood by the court to be one of straightforward murder and not of this extra layer of sort of gang conspiracy to do murder mm. um and that'll have some bearing going forward when the trial court considers the case but for right now it just is a technical thing to appreciate about why bail was granted. And, you know, in, in perhaps our last sort of 30 minutes or so, I, I, I will give us a little bit more time because I think this is actually quite an important, a lot of these distinctions are actually quite key to understanding not only what was the bail hearing and obviously now this verdict of the bail, but also understanding what might perhaps come in the actual trial once it gets underway. And that is the various interest groups that have coalesced around this particular issue. Uh, two others being, uh, we've just discussed the court and all the players in the court, both the defense and the, the state, and of course the judge, or Judge Magistrate Nkomo in this particular case. But also let's discuss the role of the mainstream media and really the, par the party politics that was playing outside of the court. Um, I can clearly see that you weren't necessarily there uh, today, Gabriel, no. but from perhaps your sources on the ground, what are you hearing was perhaps the outlook um, in terms of outside of the court with the throngs of party political uh, protesters and at times uh, rioters? Yeah, so last week, Monday and Tuesday, huge party presence, both of the EFF and the ANC, uh, lots of vitriol and eventually terrible violence. Uh, 
cars attacked, one man hospitalized, another man stabbed and hospitalized, conditions there hard to ascertain. But this week, after in particular the video footage was not released to the public, but was shown to the chief investigating officer, and he on that basis had to concede that the state's witnesses had told lies, uh, and uh, that undermines the case, uh, we noticed a, a serious drop in uh, in public participation, there were still the politicians there singing their songs, uh, but yeah. the crowds with it. Uh, on top of that, the police actually came with a fuller force. Um, my sources say today that uh, it, it's a slight uptick from from what we saw on Wednesday, but uh, but but nothing like last week. Uh, that it seems the peace is being maintained, and again, uh, it, it seems more obvious now than ever before that politicians are trying to rile up a crowd. Uh, Whose 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 broad based public interest is 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 uh, withering like a I don't know like a mini in best. the field mm. with no rain. <laughs> it's just drying out. Yeah. So I think that's and, good. I mean I think it's good. People people have been very concerned about the damage to businesses. People have been very concerned about the violence and about the race baiting. I mean uh, yes. you and I have spoken to people and I've interviewed various people who who yeah farm workers. Um, residents in Petruti from Kondor, people from Durkisdorp, uh, just, just you know, salt of the earth people, traditional leaders who are desperate for this community not to fall prey to a race baiting white versus black kind of narrative. Because mm. in rural South Africa, the conditions are so harsh and people are so isolated that you, you, everyone has to rely on their neighbors. Yeah, it is, it is a precondition. Of 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 basic survival, uh, yeah. and and so it's very important. People have been very desperate to to buck this narrative uh, that would pit black against white, and yeah. to and to center on the on the real human interests involved here, and 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 get people to be thinking in a go forward way generally. And when thinking about this case, you know, to 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 spare a moment's thought for for the deceased, and particularly for this possibility. That one brother shot another. That the one who was hardworking at the farm and the other one was a bit of a gangster goes to the big city, comes back, doesn't really know how to fit in, starts agitating, and then ends up shooting his brother. That's a tragedy to to grapple with. And uh, yeah, and people I've spoken to in that community are 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 interested in trying to grapple with that tragedy, and uh, and and to feel for that. And and think about what we can learn from that, and not to get distracted by politicians swooping in, uh, attempting to say that any black person who works for a white person is impimpy, and that any white person that you can see, you can just tell that they hate all black people, and uh, <laughs> and uh, that is a narrative that 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 I was getting a lot of buck against, and that seem and that seems to be gaining momentum on the ground uh, from the sources I spoke to today. Uh, what's gaining momentum? Sorry, just for clarity. Uh, the 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 pushback against yeah, okay. politicians coming in and trying to divide people by race. That Absolutely. seems to be gaining momentum. I mean, uh, just a, an apt example of that is the interview, the exclusive interview we we um, uh, brought you on the Big Daddy Liberty Show yesterday. You can find that, of course, here on Facebook, YouTube, or YouTube. Uh, you know of two locals, farm workers in the area that we interviewed who expressed exactly that point. But you could also understand the fear that had been generated by the political types in the area, uh, mm. with them obviously requesting that we not show their faces and uh, conceal mm. their identity. Gabriel, I'm going to end it here with you. Of course, you'll be keeping an eye on this case. Where can people find your writing and where can we reach you? Yeah, everything about this is on the Daily Friend. Uh, please check it out there. Uh, also at irr.org.za, the IRR, which is my ultimate uh, employer, uh, have, have, have released a media statement addressing the sort of broader concerns here. Um, but yeah, uh, keep following the Big Daddy Liberty show, and I think uh, you'll, you'll, you'll stay abreast of this issue and, and visit Absolutely. the Daily Friend. Absolutely. With that being said, that's exactly what we're going to do here at the BDL show. At some stage, we will make a return visit to the town of Pit Retief to actually try and reach those residents, ordinary salt of the earth people that uh, Gabriel rightly described them as, uh, to have them have their say. Because if anything, that the past uh, couple of two weeks has shown us is that, you know, once the politicians and their 
uh, supporters uh, descend on a town and shut it down like that, it definitely chases away uh, the actual locals, the residents of their town from their own public spaces. Uh, invariably preventing them from having frank, open conversations as residents about the issues that face them. So we're going to try and bring you their view on this particular issue. And again, thank you to Gabriel Krauser on that one. Gabriel, thank you very much. And you, um, it must be said, thank you, dear viewer, for watching this quick vlog. I say quick, yeah. We're on the 15, nearly 16 minute mark. If you want to support the work that we do here, again, it is your contributions that allow me to get around the country to get to these stories. Please, please, please check the details in the descriptor. And um, if you cannot make a financial contribution, the best thing you can do is to smash that like button and, of course, share this link. Thank you for watching on this era of Shabbos. Uh, just before my Shabbat, so I need to do a, a bit of prep before I also take a bit of rest uh, for 25 hours plus. And I'll see you this Sunday for another episode of Liberty and Friends. Boy, oh boy, do I not have an interesting panel of guests for you for this Sunday. Don't miss it this Sunday, Liberty and Friends um, at 8 p.m. as we wrap up the news week that was. I'm sure we'll touch on this issue too with my guest panel. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, Mensa, um, Shabbat Shalom and have a great weekend. I'll see you on Sunday uh, on the BDL show. A reminder, never trust a commie.